As educators, we're always looking to better prepare our students for whatever future challenges lie ahead of them. But with the biggest challenges still yet to come after high school, how is it that we make sure we are preparing students for colleges and careers? Academically, I felt like I was prepared, but you know, living on your own, balancing your money, grocery shopping for yourself, I wasn't prepared for that. Transitioning from high school to college, all of a sudden students have choices to make, they have time to themselves, there aren't bells that are telling them when to move between classrooms. I wasn't prepared when I started college because the first couple of years I wasn't doing time management, I wasn't prioritizing school over friends and you know having fun and at the same time I didn't really have anybody telling me that I needed to so I felt like it was a free-for-all and I could do whatever I wanted to do. You know, Mom and Dad aren't going to be there forever to take care of you and one day you're going to be on your own with your own family and you have to have these life skills. Because nobody's going to make you go to college. It's, it's your choice, uh, it's your time, and you're willing to kind of step up to that, to that challenge. Whether students choose to continue their schooling or go straight into the workforce, being technologically prepared is of the utmost importance. My first year I was enrolled in the stats class and uh, one of the assignments was to make a spreadsheet and I kind of realized just then like how I had no basic computer skills. A lot of people in my generation think these kids, they, they know it all. If you have a question about computers, just ask the kids. But the thing is, they don't have the technical skills as far as how to set margins on a Word document or put a formula into a spreadsheet or even how to be uh, creative and think outside of the box when you're doing research as far as using keywords. I graduated high school in 1980, so computers weren't a really big deal. But my guys use a computer every day. They need to know how to program it, how to make it work, how to interface it, how to get two systems to work together. Having the ability to type and, and to use Word and to be able to, to use a computer is an important skill and one that you can pick up in school. So you have to be able to adapt from one software to the other. You know, at one point, you know, we could be using AutoCAD, but down the road, we could be using another software. A large part of being technologically adaptive and prepared for colleges and careers is fueled by the ever important skill of critical thinking. Critical thinking and problem solving are, are huge, um, I think, at any level. Things are very, very black and white. And so if you can come to your workplace and see that, you know, sometimes you're going to have to ask the question why and come up with a way to get from point A to point B more effectively, you're much more valuable to your employer. For our job, it's, it, it realistically could be life and death. If you don't have the ability to assess the situation and make a decision very quickly, it could go very bad for you in this line of work. Like with my job on the council, we get a lot of information and we have to make you know, pretty big decisions, decisions that affect the whole community. The critical thinking is, again, having to, to take in all the information, decipher it, do research, problem solve. It is imperative that students are prepared for the amount of teamwork they will be met with upon graduating and that they have the social skills to interact with others. A big part of college is getting people ready to, to start a career. And in the workforce, working together with other people is, is a must. You're gonna be thrown into a group of people that maybe you never thought you'd work with. It's not gonna be as easy as going to your friend's house like it was in high school. So it is important that as they get in high school that they have that ability to work with other students, students with other backgrounds. They're not afraid to work collaboratively with others and it'll help them seek the resources, talk to the teachers, the professors, talk to the businesses. In any profession that you enter, I think communication is the number one key um, because you know we're all in the business of, of people. As architects and engineers, we, we could be behind the scenes and we could be drafting, but ultimately as, as we're working with clients and working with our um, colleagues in the office, um, you have to have that communication. One of the, the skills that I think you need in my industry is public speaking and the ability to talk in front of people. Being able to make eye contact, being able to shake someone's hand, to learn those interpersonal skills and emotional intelligence. It's one of the most important things you can have. Projects that present curriculum in ways applicable to the real world are a large part of ensuring students are ready for what is ahead. College was like a rude awakening for me, you know. I got there and I realized that all of the writing like of the essays that I did in high school in no way prepared me for writing in college. And not only college, but like just real world, you know, applying for jobs, job applications. I think what might be necessary for them to do as an exercise would be to do mock interviews. 
go through the process of constructing a resume. But once the resume is there, where's the resume going to get them? If you're lucky, the resume is going to get them to an interview. So why not go through that phase also? Because at least in that point, they've got a 30 to 40, maybe 50 year old person asking a 17, 18 year old individual some of these questions that are rather poignant. It is hard once you go out there like, oh, this guy's going to be my future boss and it will kind of start start. So you're kind of a good idea just to, you know, uh, practice a little bit and just kind of be prepared for some of the stuff they might ask you. I remember when I was going through college, they talked a lot to us about this is how you dress for a professional interview. Down to, you don't want bright colors of nail polish on your fingers and what appropriate dress looked like and the importance of being able to write a memo. I think math teachers have a little more basic understanding of what I call functional math. And just the other day I was talking with my teenagers and realized that they didn't really know how to use a tape measure. If they saw it on a piece of paper in an algebra class, they'd be able to work it. When you're in high school, you don't think English is a big deal, right? But it really is because the way somebody explains to you what the job is or what needs to be fixed on a car makes all the difference in the world. The things that math and English teachers can, can learn from professionals is to be able to work together as a unit um, to create projects that um, that challenge students to think outside the box, create projects that require students to solve math problems, um, but again, be able to um, learn to speak effectively and write properly. I think it's very in instrumental, especially for students going straight into the career, to get that hands-on experience and let the high schools help develop those tools that the industry needs. Preparing a student for colleges and careers, not to mention the real world, is not always an easily definable task. But by stressing the importance of these skills in our teaching, we will enable students to become college, career, and life ready.